Yes, second and last talk, very good. Um, I will present today our little minion. It's a profiler. Um, it's a small tool to help rectify archaeologic, archaeological profiles in QGIS. And uh, we developed it together. And it's me from uh, the Lower Saxony Institute for Historical Coastal Research in Wilhelmshaven, Northern Germany. And Kai Schmitz and Christoph Winne from Institute for Pre- and Protohistoric Archaeology in Kiel. And Niels Hempel from the Institute for Classical Archaeology in the CA Kiel. And it's, we are together, maybe you heard about them before on the conference, uh, the ISAC group. Um, so maybe when I say photogrammetry in between, that's because uh, in German we use photogrammetry also when we are rectifying profiles with uh, different programs. So what it's today about, it's, a, it's about rectifying profile images. And I have to say, in the beginning, we tried to finish this whole small tool until the CIA starts. Mm -hmm. Does not work, so we hope uh, in a few weeks we can upload that to uh, QGIS Extension Manager, but you can also try it on GitHub. So the idea came um, during or after the excavations uh, I did during my PhD. So we had an excavation, that's an example from Labenstedt. It's a Neolithic site. We had about 700 square meters of excavation and the same amount of uh, features, mostly posts. So we had a lot of, only a few 20, 10 to 20 centimeters rest of posts. And we decided not to paint all the profiles because it's, um, yeah, too much work. We had a limited time in field, but we know we had a, more time afterwards in the office to do the rest. So we decided to make photographs of the profiles and then rectifying them later on. So therefore we use um, Autodesk, AutoCAD, and the program Photoplant from Faro, former Qubit. Um, that's, I think, in Germany, I don't know how it is in other countries, but very popular to use that for rectifying the profiles. So, and in the end, it's very nice. You get a profile rectified uh, exactly on the 3D position where it is uh, on your excavation. So you have your whole excavation everywhere, your profile. That's nice. And these are the uh, total station measurements from the excavation itself. So <coughs> if you were carefully, everything fits together more or less. And in the end, it's quite nice. And some um, features you can do more or less interesting 3D stuff. So you have all the um, planner in the correct high, and you have the profile. So normally they are in between. And this is, by the way, a well from northern Germany, a Neolithic well. But very common, or what you really need on most uh, most times, is you have only um, drawings, so like the drawings you do normally in the field, because you need them for the catalog uh, at the end of the PhD or the publication, and for the reports for the local authorities. So they don't really need this all this 3D stuff. So using Photoplan and AutoCAD is more or less um, taking a sledgehammer to, to crack a nut, so it's much more than you really need. And it is expensive. So we thought about how to do it uh, open source, or less expensive. And we thought about, okay, using QGIS, because everybody of us is using it, and we know how to work with it. And it has a georeferencer that's also perfectly um, working, or more or less perfectly working with photographs. Sorry. So, <clears throat> with this, um, but the problem is, the QGIS don't know 3D. So, and this, this is sad. Um, so, we came together in this group, and now this is a small commercial break for ISAC. So, we talked about that problem in the ISAC group. So, it's an issue for statistical analysis and archaeology. Um, it's not longer only statistics. Um, so, and we are archaeologists and uh, computer scientists uh, developing IT solutions and statistical tools in and for archaeology. 
and we are from uh, Kiel University, from the Institutes for Pre- and Proto-Historic Archaeology, for Classical Archaeology. But, yeah, so it's my institute, the Lower Saxon Institute, and the um, Ugent Center for Bento Studies in Ghent, uh, University of Cologne, members of the Department of Anthropology, University of Washington. And if you are interested in that group, go to our site. It's open for everybody who likes to join. You can take a look what we are doing. In the R sessions, there were a lot of uh, examples from what we're doing there. So coming back to Profiler. Um, so rectifying uh, images. So it's possible in QGIS, but not with our data, because the profiles are vertical and not horizontal. So the simple idea was we are rotating the parts so that we can use uh, rectifying the images in QGIS. And so the, point, uh, the part Profiler is doing is this rotating of the points. Uh, what we need is um, a shape file with points uh, in a Cartesian coordinate system. And the Z coordinate as an attribute. So it will change in QGS3, if I understood it correct, so we can also use the big value of the shape itself. And uh, a profile number, because when you have a lot of profiles, there's no how to separate. And the uh, view direction. And here's an example. So this is a profile. So this part is excavated. We have the observer. We have the direction of the view. And that is what we need. So the, the points we input are the nails in the profile that we photograph and measured. Um, so this is an example. So on this side we have um, the top view of a profile. So the profile is not straight because it's easier to show. And um, these are the upper points, these are the lower points, and this is a point in the middle. And when we flip it, so we uh, put the Z instead of the Y coordinate in the system, we see the profile, but the problem is the distortion due to the view. So we have to bring uh, to, to um, fix that problem. And that's quite easy because we only have to rotate the profile that we look from the south orthogonal to the profile we excavated. And to know where, so we need the slope of the profile to, have, to calculate the rotation angle. And that's what we do uh, with a linear regression. So we make a linear regression to our point cloud. It could be more than five points. And so we get a slope. And with the slope and the direction of u, we know we have to rotate the profile in one or the other direction on a different degree. And then we use translation and rotation to rotate the whole profile, so the points of the profile. So in the end, we rotate them so that the profile is parallel to the x-axis. So this is an example. So we have our old profile here and the rotated profile here. So. And then when we change the y and z coordinate, it's quite easy. Then we have exactly what we like to have. Um, there are different options, or two different options. In uh, We call it method. So we have the projected method and the surface method. method. So when you have a very good profile, so that is perfectly vertical, it doesn't make any difference what we, need, uh, what we use. But on the projected, you have the not straight, so this is a side view. Um, you have the profile that is not straight, and you have a projection pane. And that's very similar when you go to an excavation, you have your, your line, and you're measuring with your search uh, I don't know. Um, and that's exactly what you are doing when you make a drawing in field. But due to reasons of uh, uh, other R tools we want to um, use this one with, we also need the, the surface, so this is an orthogonal view on the profile. So what we are doing is, we are rotating the profile again. So this is that, this is Y. This is the old profile, and then we rotate them so that it's uh, perfectly vertical. And then, okay, that's only a gimmick, so we have the direction so you can export it 
So this is the top view. You can export it uh, parallel to the original profile section, or you can export it horizontal. So there are um, different kinds of error handling we have. So we're checking all the columns uh, in before the, the rotation starts to see if everywhere so in if in the columns for numbers or numbers and all the stuff. But we have also to ways to measure if the rotation works good. And this is uh, the distance between the top points. This is side view. We measure them before and after the rotation. And then we get a difference in the distance. And in some cases, we recognize that there is a problem in the, uh, with the rotation. And then we get a problem here. And another point is, this is the input. Um, the input table, so we have the profile number, we have the Z value, the view, and something called use. So uh, the points we used for calculating the uh, linear regression. So all points will be um, rotated, but not all the points. Uh, so will be used for um, calculating the linear regression if you don't like to. Then in this case, we have the problem that we have here a value that's very similar to the residuals of the regression. And um, we want, don't want to have this point in the calculation, so we say don't use it, and then we have a better uh, result. So in the end, you can use your measured points from a profile uh, from the excavation. Then use Profiler to rotate the points. Then you can use the georeferencer and the picture. And then you can draw your profile in the computer and export it like you like. If um, you can export it. So, and as I said, it's not finished yet, but you can stay tuned. You get infos when this is finished or other stuff is finished uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on the ISAC homepage, and on the homepage of the Institute where I'm working. So thank you very much.